So I know a lot of us can relate to Shane Dawson's fear of flying and fear of death that we clearly saw in the first video of his new series, The Beautiful World of Jeffree Star. But if you can relate to that fear, in this video, we're gonna talk about three different ways you can start to overcome it. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can learn from them. And I will be covering the entire beautiful world of Jeffree Star series from Shane Dawson. So make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And something new that I'm doing with every single video, granted that YouTube monetizes it, I am giving 20% to a charity that kind of relates to the video. So this video, please share it because 20% of all of the ad revenue is going to the AFSP. All right, this is an awesome organization. They do a lot of events around the country as well. So make sure you check out their website. And if you would like to donate to them directly, I will provide a link down in the description and down in the pinned comment below. All right, but anyways, oh, the wait is over. It's been, it's been about a year, right, since the mind of Jake Paul and he just, launched his first video for the beautiful world of Jake, uh, Jeffree Star. And uh, yeah, I think he said it's gonna be nine episodes, but the first episode was great. Um, last year, a lot of you were introduced to me because I was covering the, the Mind of Jake Paul series, so I'm loving covering this. And like, just seeing it, it reminded me of last year and I was so inspired and I have a whole piece of paper with a bunch of notes uh, for different topics. But anyways, this first topic, we're gonna be talking about some stuff that Shane Dawson talked about when he was talking about his fear can see it in your eyes. <laughs> I just had like a whole moment with Rylan where we went upstairs and we like prayed over each other to make sure we were both safe. It's like, it's crazy. I used to not be afraid of flying, but every year it gets worse and the happier I get in life, the worse it gets. It's like, I don't want to die. Makes sense. So yeah, the fear of flying, that anxiety, the fear of death, this is something that is extremely common. And I know it's something that I can relate to and maybe you can too, all right? So in this video, we're not gonna be talking so much about the anxiety aspect of it, but that kind of existential like fear of death. So I'm going to be referencing this amazing book that I just read and oh my God, I hope you get a copy. It's down in the description below, I'll put it down there. But anyways, it is called The Antidote, Happiness for People Who Can't Stand Positive Thinking. Like how dope is that title? But it's by a guy named Oliver Berkman and it's so good, it's so good. Like if you are prone to negative thinking and you don't like all the like, kind of hippy dippy positivity kind of self-help stuff like get this book like it's it's amazing one of my favorite books all right but anyways i just finished it it's so good i did the audiobook it's pretty nice anyways so i'm gonna be pulling from that so shane dawson when he talks about that fear of death i want to talk about a few different things that were discussed in this video so like you saw from that clip something that shane dawson talks about is he talks about how weird it is right like his anxiety and his fear of death has gotten worse which doesn't make sense because his life is getting better, right? And I can so relate to that, and some of you might be able to relate to that as well. So the way I can relate to that is in my addiction, right? Those of you who don't know me, hi, I'm Chris, I'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic, seven years clean and sober. But anyways, like, I, I wasn't afraid of death. I wasn't, I was actually hoping for death, right? And when I first got sober, I was still absolutely miserable. But, and something I try to teach people is when we're at that bottom, when we're at that low place, there's only one direction to go, which is up. And it's kind of like this liberating experience, right? And, you know, Shane Dawson has been very open about his mental health issues in the past and everything like that, and life is getting better. And for some of us, like, I remember when I got sober, my anxiety got worse. So one of the things that I learned about myself was, 
My anxiety got worse because I was used to chaos, right? Like sometimes we've been living in chaos so long. Like sometimes like we started out in a chaotic household. Like I'm the son of an alcoholic mom and everything like that. Like you might've grown up in an insane household. And when things start to get better in your life, like your brain isn't adapted to it, right? But the other thing we need to talk about is as things get better, we start to fear death even more because of attachment. So in the book, The Antidote, he references a bunch of different philosophies such as Stoicism and Buddhism and everything like that. Uh, those are two of my favorite philosophies, but attachment is something that leads to a lot of suffering. So our fear, a lot of our fear is based in worrying about what we're gonna lose, right? So like, if you, if you look at it, when Shane was talking about you know, my life's getting better, like it's getting better and better. Why am I getting worse, right? Because he has more things. And it's not just the stuff, like we all know uh, him and Ryland moved into that new house, but like him and Ryland got engaged. You know what I mean? Like he has Ryland and love and all these other things. And we get so afraid of losing that. So something that's helped me might help you. Uh, <laughs> something that's helped me is therapy and antidepressant, anti-anxiety medications. <laughs> but anyways, something that's helped me too is the Buddhist philosophy of impermanence, which is just learning that everything comes and goes, all right? So the next thing I wanna talk about is this dude right here, Albert Ellis. This dude right here, all right. So one of the best psychologists of all time. He came up with something called REBT, Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, all right? So uh, a few months ago, I read one of his books, and he has a ton of books, but the book I read was How to Stubbornly Refuse to Make Yourself Miserable About Anything, Yes, Anything. So Albert Ellis, one of the reasons I love him, because sometimes I get crap because I'm not like a licensed psychologist, Albert Ellis actually started out in a completely different field. I can't remember if it was like marketing or sales or something like that, but he just really was fascinated with human behavior and he ended up going on to becoming one of the most well-known psychologists in history. But he came out with REBT. And those of you who follow me, you know like I am a huge fan of logic and rationality and that's exactly what REBT is. So using that technique, when we talk about death, we talk about the rationality, like is this rational? So like I, the best way to describe it is think about Spock from Star Trek. I'm not even a Trekkie, but everybody knows Spock, right? Spock is kind of like this emotionless, logical being, right? So we ask ourselves, is it rational? Is it logical to be afraid of death? No, why? Because it's inevitable, all right? So why are we going to put emotional energy towards this thing and worrying about this thing that we have little to no control over, right? Now this doesn't mean like just don't care about anything. Like those, those are my fellow people out there who struggle with anxiety. That keeps us alive, right? Like I always look both ways before crossing the street, always got my seatbelt on and everything like that. But tripping about the future and worrying about that, there's no point when it's an inevitable part of life, right? And something else that they brought up, which was really interesting in this book was, and I never even thought about it like this. I was like, Phew. so we're worried about death, right? And what's gonna happen after this? We kind of think of this like abyss that we don't even know, right? But why aren't we as afraid looking back of before we were born? It was just this blank abyss as well, right? But now it's just going back to whatever that was. You see what I mean? And, and by the way, get the book. Uh, Oliver Berkman <laughs> explained that a lot better than I did, but I'm like, yo, that kind of makes sense, all right? So the last one, number three, is, um, and there's a whole specific chapter in this book called Memento Mori, all right? And it's all about that fear of death, okay? And I guess there was a book that I just added to my wish list. It's called The Denial of Death by a dude and his last name's Becker. But anyways, it talks about Memento Mori. And this is reminding yourself that death is going to happen. So one of the things is, is that like back in the day, I think they talk about like Greek or Roman generals. They used to have people like follow them around like into battle and stuff, like just reminding them like memento mori, memento mori, like yo bro, you might die, right? And here's the thing, when it comes to Shane Dawson, when it comes to you, when it comes to anybody, like having death in your mind is 
it's a blessing and here's why, right? Like the way they talk about it in the book is those of us who are actually thinking about death and having it in the forefront of our mind, a little memento mori, like we're more likely to make the most out of life, right? Like we're more likely to do things and everything like that because we're worried like, what if tomorrow is my last day? You know what I mean? And I can tell you from personal experience because a little over seven years ago, because of my drug addiction and alcohol addiction, I had a 10% chance of living, all right? Like the doctors called my mom and said he might not live through the night. So when you come this close to death, like every day is just like, we talk about in recovery how we're living on borrowed time, right? So one of my goals each day is to just to make the most of it. Like one of the best ways I can explain this is whenever a tragedy happens, like whenever a national tragedy happens or even a global tragedy happens, people are always like saying, hey, remember like, tell, tell the people in your life that you love them and you care about them and everything like that. And to me, I'm like, that's every day. Like when I drop my son off at school, I don't let him leave without him saying I love you back. All right, it's kind of like a <laughs> into the spider verse, you know, you know what scene I'm talking about. But anyways, like I treat every day like it's going to be my last day. And some days it's easier to do that than others. Some days I fall into a depression, I don't wanna do anything, you know, or whatever it is. But I always remember how close I came to dying and it helps me overcome my fears and things like that. Especially because I know like I've already been to the worst. I've already been to hell and back, right? So just try, my suggestion is, try to take that fear and turn it into a positive, all right? Each and every day, tell the people in your life how much you love them and care about them. Don't, uh, you know, be afraid to do things because if something were to happen to you tomorrow, are you going to regret anything? You know what I mean? Like the last thing I'll talk about is, uh, a few years ago, I lost my grandma and she was my number one, right? And, you know, I, I feel I was able to cope with her death better than I would have been because I got sober a few years before she passed away. Um, because she was able to see me turn my life around. Like, that that might have haunted me the rest of my life. I have worked with many addicts and alcoholics when I was working at a drug and alcohol treatment center and they're getting sober and something they would often talk about is the people that have already passed away, that passed away while they were still in addiction. You see what I mean? So use this fear as a way to go out there and just make life badass. All right, but anyways, anyways, if you have any tips for when you get stuck in this kind of rumination about worrying about this thing that you have no control over, let's have a conversation down in the comments below. And don't forget, please share this video because 20% of the ad revenue is going to the AFSP and there is a link down below if you wanna do a direct donation, all right? And don't forget, I am covering this entire series. I am doing at least three or four different topics on this first episode. And if you can think of any topics like, huh, why did they do that? Is there anything I can learn from? Or I can relate to this? What should I do? Like, let's have a conversation. That's what I love doing here, all right? But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying the books I've written or the merch, like with our little kitty Wyatt on it and all that stuff. Oh, and we got hoodies in the merch store. It's starting to get chilly outside, all right? But thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.